Now, have you ever wondered tankers, big, huge ships carrying loads of fuel hardly ever explode despite carrying highly flammable fuel? Well, to cause a fire, we need three things, fuel, oxygen, and heat. So to prevent fires, it would be best to remove oxygen and replace it with an inert gas like helium or neon or argon, nitrogen, etc. What's up everyone? How is it going? Welcome to Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. First of all, we must know that the fuel system is in charge of the fuel and the fuel quantities in the tanks and the system will know when to supply it to the engines and APU. Secondary functions will be to cool the generator, the IDG and also to provide flutter relief and wing bending. For newer aircrafts, the fuel is able to be transferred from the center tanks to the inner tanks. As you can see, there is an outer tank, an inner tank, and a center tank. Option for operators is that they can also install two additional center tanks. What is not shown here is that there is also a vent tank here. Question is, what is the vent tank for? Here is an analogy. When you get angry, being hot and bothered with your wife, Sometimes you need to vent out your feelings to your best friend. Similarly, when temperature rise, fuel will expand. So the vent tank will be there to accommodate this fuel expansion. Okay, let us talk about how much fuel this bad boy can hold. Depending on aircraft serial number, the A320 can hold about 18 tons of fuel some 18.7, some 19 tons, etc. With one additional center tank, it is 21 tons of fuel. And with two additional center tanks, it is 23 tons. Keep it simple, just remember 18, 21, and 23. Let us have a look at some of the components that are available. You have six fuel pumps. Two on each wing and two at the center. With new aircrafts, the center pumps are actually jet pumps in which the center tank fuel can actually be transferred to the tank on the wing. Pretty cool. You also can transfer fuel from one wing to another via a crossfit valve. How many motors control the crossfit valve? If you know the answer, do comment below. In case the fuel pumps fail, you have suction valve that will open to allow fuel to be fed to the engines by gravity. Do note that the center tank pumps are not fitted with suction valves. Let us talk about fuel feed sequence. I'm talking about aircrafts that has jet pumps in the center tank. Fuel from the center tank will flow to the inner tanks. If the aircraft have additional center tanks, then the fuel will transfer to the main center tanks when these sensors detect that low level fuel is in the main center tanks. The aircraft will then use the inner tank until it reaches 750 kilograms. Then she will get the extra fuel from the outer tanks. Simple. All of this is controlled by a computer called Fuel Level Sensing Control Unit or FLSCU. Don't let the name scare you, it is just a computer controlling fuel transfer and also IDG cooling. You will get an ECAM message if one wing tank goes below 750 kilograms. Let us talk about the APU. The APU gets its juice aka fuel via a special pump. Even with loss of the tank pumps and AC power, the pump can still operate via AC essential shed. If AC essential shed fails, then the power will come from the AC static inverter bus. Okay, now for fuel recirculation. Some coal fuel will be diverted to the IDG, the integrated drive generator, 
heat exchanger to cool the generators and then it will flow back to the outer tanks. This is good when the IDG oil temperature is high or when the aircraft is at low engine power. Which computer controls this? Well, it is the FedEx. So what if the outer tank becomes full? It flows to the inner tank. When the inner tank becomes full, then the center tank pump stops. The aircraft will use the inner tank's fuel and when the fuel is down by 500 kilograms, then she will start using the center tank fuel. Let us talk about refueling. In automatic mode, the fuel will go to the additional center tank ACT if installed, the center tank and outer cell simultaneously. For manual mode, the fuel will go to the wing tanks first, then only to the center tank. You can either refuel on the left or right side of the aircraft. It takes about 20 minutes to refuel all tanks if there are additional center tanks at 7 more minutes. Now, it is story time for the fuel quantity indicator. Just imagine it like a weighing machine measuring how heavy you are. If you are moving about when you are stepping on the scales, the reading will not be accurate. Similarly, the FQI system, the fuel quantity system, is equipped with all those fancy name sensors that will give you a reading how much fuel we have in the tanks. But if the aircraft starts climbing or is in a go-round phase, the indication can fluctuate up to 1,400 kilograms. So just wait about 6 minutes to get a more accurate reading. The FQI has two channels, so if one channel fails, the other takes over. Now, have you ever wondered tankers, big, huge ships carrying loads of fuel hardly ever explode despite carrying highly flammable fuel? Well, to cause a fire, we need three things. Fuel, oxygen and heat. So to prevent fires, it would be best to remove oxygen and replace it with an inert gas like helium, or neon, or argon, nitrogen, etc. The cheapest and most cost-effective way is to introduce nitrogen in the air, an inert gas, a noble gas, a gas that does not react, like monks. Similarly, in our aircraft, the fuel inerting system takes bleed air from the engine and taps into the nitrogen molecules. This oxygen depleted air is then sent to the center tanks where there is a high risk right there. Just remember that fuel inerting system is only installed in the center tank. Okay, let's look at the fuel panel overhead. These push buttons represent the fuel pumps. If you press it, it means the fuel pump is off. Fault light in amber comes on when the delivery pressure drops. Can you tell me what is the main push button is for? Do comment below if you know the answer. The crossfit push button is to transfer fuel between the two wing tanks. Now, it is time for ECAM fuel page. This is the fuel used. This is the low pressure fuel valve. The crossfit valve, the wing pumps, fuel quantity, fuel temperature, you will get an advisory message when the fuel is greater than 45 degrees in the inner cell or 55 degrees in the outer cell. In this case, just switch off the galley push button. If you get temperature below than minus 40 degrees, then descend to a lower altitude or increase your mark number. Do refer to your QRH regarding this. Fuel flow and fuel on board. Question. 
if you are halfway flying and lose your fuel quantity indication, what would you do? Do comment below if you know the answer.